2017, Calculus BC, FRQ number 5. So we're given a function, and we want to find the slope of the line tangent at 3. So that's going to be quotient rule. So part A, F prime of X. So it's going to be low. d high, which is 0, minus high, d low, over low squared. Well, that's just 0. So now I want to plug in 3. Done. Don't do anything else. That answer is sufficient. Don't simplify it to this. That would be rather foolish. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Liar, liar, pants and fire. Now we're done. Now we're done. Okay, it's part A, part B. Uh, find the x-coordinate for each critical point of f. Classify each critical point as a location of relative min, max, or neither. So critical points are where the derivative is 0 or undefined. So we have f prime of x. I'm going to rewrite it here. So that could happen when this is 0 or undefined. So we're going to set the numerator equal to 0. We get 4x equal to 7. x equals 7 over 4. That's 1 and 3 fourths. That's in my interval. So that is one of my critical points. Now, dividing by 0 is also undefined. So that's a critical point. So I set the denominator equal to 0. And... I need to factor this. So 2x and x clears, clearly gets that. Um, to get 5, a 5 and a 1, that should work. That's 5x. That's 2x. Clearly, both those have to be negative. So we look like that. So we get 2x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals 5 over 2. x minus 1 equals 0. x equals 1. This is 2 and a half. We don't use that because that's the right endpoint. So we can ignore that. So we have 1. So the critical points are x equal 1 and 7 fourths. Now we have to determine if those are relative maxes or relative mins. So let's make a little table. That'll be 1, 7 fourths, oh man, 1 and 3 fourths. So pick a point to left. Okay, what's my, do I have endpoints on here? I can't even remember. Okay, it's 1 to 2.5, right? Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't even need to look at 1. 1 is the endpoint. Golly gee willikers, this makes life so much easier. So we just have one critical point at 7 fourths because one is the left end and we don't include that. All right, so much better, so much better. So 7 fourths is 1 and 3 fourths. So I can't choose one on the left. Um, I'm going to do 1 half, I guess, and 2 to the right. And that's x. I want f prime. So where is my... So we're going to take this equation, and we're going to plug in 2 first. So if you plug in 2, let's see. This will be 8 minus 7. This will be positive and negative. So if you plug in 2, the top will be negative, negative. And you plug in 2 here, it's 4, 8. 
8 minus 14, 8 minus 14, that's negative 6, and plus 5, that's negative. So that's going to be a positive there. Plug in 1 half. 1 half, four, one half of 4 is 2 minus 7, that's negative and negative, so the top's going to be positive. Plug in 1 half, that's going to be 1 fourth. So 1 half minus 3 and a half. 1 half minus 3 and a half, that's going to be minus 3. That's going to be positive on the bottom. So I'm getting positive and positive. Um, but according to the answer, F prime changes from positive to negative. So I must have made a mistake at 2. Let's see what's going on. So plug in 2. If I put 2 here, that's going to be 8 minus 7 is positive. Oh, yeah, yeah, top's negative. Plug in 2, that's 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 14. 8 minus 14 is negative. I am just like... Oh, it's squared! Yoshida! Loser, loser, pants on fire. That's squared, so the bottom's always positive, so it's negative. Oh, <sighs> yes. I guess I should be happy that I found out why. So it's not coming out right. So that's going to be negative. So we have to write our final conclusion. F has a relative maximum at x equals 7 fourths because F prime changes from positive to negative at x equals 7 fourths. Bamo, done with part B. Part C, use the identity that that equals that to evaluate this integral. Show that the integral diverges. Okay, let's do this. So part C. So f of x, I'm going to rewrite it as these two things. Integral from 5 to infinity of 2 over 2x minus 5 minus 1 over x minus 1 dx. So I need to do a limit as a goes to infinity, integral from 5 to a. And should I break this up into two? Okay, let's do this. We can do this. We are going to be doing some fancy schmancy work here. And so maybe I should do side work for you guys so you don't get confused to what's going on. So I'm going to do side work. This is side work to find this integral. So the integral of 2 over 2x minus 5 is going to be a u sub where u equals 2x minus 5 du will be 2dx. Do I have 2dx? Wow, nicely. I do have 2dx. So that's going to become du. And this is going to become u. So this becomes the integral of du over u, which is ln absolute u plus c, which is ln absolute 2x minus 5 plus c. That's side work. And then the integral of 1 over x minus 1, u is x minus 1, du will be dx. So this becomes the integral of du over u, which is ln absolute u plus c, ln of absolute x minus 1 plus c. But for this particular problem, we are doing a definite integral, so I don't need the plus c's. So I'm going to get ln... 2x minus 5 minus ln x minus 1 evaluated from 5 to a. So I'm going to plug in a, ln of 2a minus 5 minus ln of a minus 1 minus ln, plug in 5, that's 10 minus 5, ln of 5, and then plug in 5, that's ln of 4.
And now to the limit as A goes to inf Oh my. They're going to do some fancy schmancy uh, stuff here. Because what's going to happen? You're going to get infinity minus infinity, but that you don't know what that is. But they do this trick where they use your property of ln's, that's absolute value, where ln two things subtracted, you divide them. Minus, and so this will be ln of 5 fourths, same thing, we're dividing. So we're just going to combine those. So here's what's happening. You have this rule, you could take the limit of the inside part. So you got ln, the limit as a goes to infinity of 2a minus 5 or a minus 1 minus ln of 5 over 4. Wow, this is tricky. That's just going to be 2. So it's going to be ln of 2 minus ln of 5 over 4. Now, you can use the properties since you're subtracting two ln's. Oh, those are all positive. I don't need absolute value. You can divide the first one divided by the second one, which is the first one multiplied by the reciprocal. So it's ln of 8 over 5. Crazy. And now I got to go part D, and I have no room. I have to erase all that. Yuck, 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 yuck. Okay. I guess I just got to erase it all. So sad. So much work. So much work. Oh, well. Yes. Not so bad. Yes. Okay. So part D. Determine whether the series converges or diverges. State the conditions of the test used to determine convergence or divergence. So we just found the integral of this. And the integral was an actual value. So we're going to use the integral test. But for the integral test to work, the function must be continuous, positive, and decreasing. So you have to state that. Let me see here. So if you look at this, is it continuous? Yes, because 3 is continuous and the denominator is continuous as long as the denominator doesn't equal 0. And we determined it equals 0 up here where it equals 0. At 1 and 5 halves, it equals 0. But we're starting at 5. Starting at 5. So above 5, we're not going to have any denominators of 0. So we won't have that issue. And the denominator if it's increasing the whole time. So we have a parabola. Let me show you. This is kind of a brain. The denominator is a parabola. It crosses at 1 and 5 halves. There's 5 halves. So it's going to look like that. So you can see it's always increasing to the right of 5 halves. So the denominator will always be increasing. That makes this function decreasing. And to the right of 5 halves is always positive. So that makes f positive and decreasing and continuous. So f is positive. Uh-oh, I'm missing an i there. Positive. Continuous and decreasing on the interval from 5 to infinity. And you can write it with words or with symbols like that. And then we're pretty much done. 
therefore, okay, yeah, therefore, since the integral of f of x dx converges, therefore, the series also converges. And we're done. That's it. Um, I'm looking at this scoring guidelines. They also did a limit comparison test. They reasoned that this looks like 1 over n squared. If you look at this, it's kind of like 1 over n squared. And so they did a comparison to 1 over n squared. We know 1 over n squared is a convergent series. It's a p series with a p greater than 1. And so that limit of this divided by 1 over n squared comes out to be 3 halves. And we know if that's anything between 0 and infinity, whatever the series we divided by does, so does the series we have here. And therefore, both of those would converge also. That is the other way. That's it. Bye.